Verses 2 and 3 seem to relate the aims and purposes of the khutbah. Why does Allah in verse 2 distinguish between conveying the ayat and teaching the book? Does this inform us further about the purposes of the khutbah? Yeah. This is a very good question. Um, the, uh, recite the ayat. So, and you zakihim purify them. And teach them the book and hikmah and, and wisdom. Or hikmah is, is wisdom. It could be just the, the teaching of knowledge itself. Um, so... Tilawat al ayat. So many of the tafsir say that uh, uh, that the Prophet ﷺ, because the Prophet didn't read, so it, it, Allah would have said, read to them ayatullah. But tilawat recite literally recite to them ayatullah, which also yatlu alayhim ayatim, which means that these ayat are not the prophets, but simply the, the prophet is performing the role of reciting uh, ayatullah. And then, but beyond, beyond the tilawa, and I'll, I'll uh, to answer Brian's in, in, in a second, so beyond the tilawa, then the tezkiyah, which the path to purification and the teaching of the further things, the, the book itself, which which is distinguished distinguished from tilawat al ayat, because teaching the book is also teaching the dynamic and the method of tadabbur al-ayat, reflecting and thinking and reasoning upon the ayat, which in itself is the heart of hikmah. So from this, that the most basic, like uh, uh, um, uh, at the for formalistic level, is that every Jum'ah, there must be there must be, and the, the you know, you get into the fiqh books, into whether um, you must recite in, a khutbah, in the first khutbah an ayah, at least one ayah, a minimum of one ayah, or in the second khutbah, a minimum of one ayah, or is it enough to recite a minimum of one ayah in the both khutbahs, or must it must be a minimum of one surah. They get into all the, you know, as, as books of fiqh often usually, usually do. But then that, but the taskiyah and the teaching of the book, here is where you, there is, so some said, well, you must also counsel people to remember Allah and purify themselves. And, but I think Brian is right in that, obviously it is not just a formalistic process of saying an ayah and then counsel people to purify themselves, and then counsel people reflect on God's book, and then I sit down. But to actually perform these roles, because we, the, the prophet who, in, 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 again, the image of Tarkuka Qa'iman, that the, the, the the Prophet, when he, when, when he stands in the role of the of the of the educator, uh, reciting the verses, but guiding people to purifying their souls, getting their priorities straight, learning how to turn this book into a living constitution. To, to turn this book from rituals that are meaningless in and of themselves unless 
they serve an entire, they serve Israel Mustaqim, they serve a moral path. The challenge of the khutbah is, is no less than that. You must go beyond tilawat al-ayah to simply recite the ayah. To taking on the challenge of giving serious thought in what you communicate to people as to what is needed for human beings to elevate irtaqa, to human, human beings to elevate or your congregation to elevate and to purify, to evolve, to progress, to become from one year to the other, from one day to the other, from one month to the other, from one year to the other, a closer to the beauty that is Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to marshal the Quran as a living ethical path and constitution in their life. That's not, regardless of how many times you, you speak abstractions about the Quran, unless you walk, unless you give people an examples of, of applied ethics, applied morality, People will not, it's like the difference, someone walks in and gives a lecture in anatomy, describes the human body perfectly, and expects, that's all they do, and expects the students to go out and become doctors. Just because you know the human body perfectly doesn't mean that you're gonna be able to train anyone. Unless your teachers teach you how to take this, you know, physiological knowledge and turn it into an applied science of treating human beings, an experiential science, you know, it's the same thing. The reason we have in, in law school experiential programs is because I could stand up and I could lecture about the theory, you know, contracts theory. But that doesn't qualify anyone to handle a contract unless people, unless students have the, exper the experiential education into how to actually handle a contract, how to actually read a contract, or how to take the desires of two negotiating parties and turn these desires into an actual contract, written contract. Theory can only progress to a point. And so I completely agree with Brian in the sense that this is the challenge that the Khatib has. You must become like that teacher that provides experiential knowledge. How the message of Allah translates in its engagement with real life into actual choices about priorities and that these priorities, how they negotiate the ethical parameters that Allah gives us, the marching orders in our lives that Allah gives us and how doing so will always elevate us to scare the nafs and bring us closer to Allah. And that is why our khutab are, you know, make people fall asleep. Because it's always just a description of anatomy, nothing beyond. How many times can you be told, oh, you know, you, you, you hear the same hadith, the same story from Sirah that teaches you about, I don't know, Ithar or Ihsan or Sirt or whatever, but okay, I've heard it a million times, but unless I can look up to this person who's given the khutbah as someone who can provide me experiential knowledge, that person also who's given the khutbah becomes entirely irrelevant to life. Uh, 
if there are any khatibs out there who hear what I'm saying, you know, this is your challenge. This is, this is, in you decide, through you, Allah's religion either becomes a living, breathing being or a museum piece. And it all starts with this, you know, what we hear in our congregation, what we hear in our mosques. Because it's it's how we relate to Masajid Allah, to how we relate to Allah's, uh, we're places of worship. 